Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this is the Odin Inspector. It's one of the very best tools you can get to enhance your workflow in Unity and help you make better games even faster. This video is split in two parts. First, let's look at some of the demos to see what the asset can do and how they work. And then after that, I'll do a step-by-step -step guide on how to start using it and add it to your own games. Check out the entire playlist where I highlight great assets to help you make your games awesome. And as always, there's a link to the asset in the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. So, Odin Inspector. It's one of the highest rated assets on the asset store, and for a very good reason. This is one of those tools that if you use it right, it can have a drastic improvement in your productivity. And of course, the more productive you are, the less time it takes you to make your game, which lowers your costs, which in turn makes it easier to achieve profitability. So definitely don't underestimate the power of good tools to help you work better. Unity is an extremely powerful engine, not just for making games, but also for building tools for making those games. The Unity editor is extremely customizable. I've already covered how you can create custom editor windows with fancy buttons and so on. If you put in the time, you can definitely do some amazing things. However, the issue is that whole process is extremely laborious with tons of boilerplate code that you need to write in order to get just a single custom thing showing. For me, the most complex custom editor I made was probably the one for the crafting system. Just some buttons and object references positioned in a specific way, and even though it's simple, it still took a lot of work to make. So writing custom Unity editors is extremely powerful, but not easy to use at all. That's where Odin Inspector comes in. It makes that process extremely painless and super easy to use. Being able to easily build tools is one of those things that can make or break your productivity, which in turn can be the deciding factor between making profitable or unprofitable games. One huge difference is how, when making custom editors, you need to create a separate script, put it on an editor folder, and write tons of code. With Odin, however, you literally just add an attribute directly above the field. That's it. As you may know, the more files you have in your codebase, the harder it is to maintain. So just that change, going from two separate files with tons of boilerplate code, going to a single file with a single attribute, that change alone makes this asset more than worth it. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. So over here, I've got my Unity project and I've imported the package. Since this asset is all about making really nice editors, naturally they have a really good getting started window. Just go up here into Tools, Odin Inspector, Getting Started. And here you see this real nice window and you can access all of the information that you need. As you can see, it's very, very detailed. Every one of these buttons opens more windows with even more data so you can really learn how it works. And to see it in action, down here they have a really awesome RPG sample project. Just click on the open window and out pops out the window. So this is a window that was created with Odin Inspector and it's fully functional. So you can move it, you can dock it, you can resize it. And as name implies, this is a sample for an RPG game. So by selecting any of these objects, you can see all of the things that you can easily create with Odin. So for example, here you've got a simple image with an object selector. You've got text boxes, so you can input the name. You've got a bunch of sliders. Over here, a bunch of things that you can select. Then you've got a matrix where you can click and drag various objects. You've got the objects themselves showing an icon as well as an amount. Then you've also got these really nice tabs, so it constantly switches between what you want to see. Over here on the stats, you also see a bunch of sliders. So this is the display for the characters. Then down here, display for the armors. So again, shows a really nice image, some text box, a drop down menu for the type, then some text area so you can input multiple lines, and over here a simple list so you can add various things. And of course up here you've got buttons to create a new item or anything. All the data behind this is stored in scriptable objects. I've covered them in detail in another video, and if you've worked with scriptable objects then you know they are excellent for storing data, but by default, they show their data in the inspector using normal fields. So none of these fancy sliders and images. And all of this is included in the project files. So in this case, over here under demos, under the RPG editor, you can see that. So for example, here is a character and I can double click and yep, here's the script and how it all works. So you can inspect all of these attributes to see how everything is made. I'm going to cover how these attributes work in a bit. Now to see the massive difference that this makes, I can, for example, take this inspector, which is showing a weapon, then just swap it out for a debug inspector, which makes it look pretty close to the default inspector, so here you can see the huge difference. So this is just a bunch of fields, a bunch of tabs, a bunch of things, whereas over here we've got some really nice, really nicely organized, so all the stats, modifiers, the icon, and so on. So both of them are displaying the same underlying data, but obviously one is much more easy to work with. So this demo that they show here is really awesome. This really showcases the power of this tool. 
You can imagine if you were working on an RPG just how much more productive you would be setting all of the data of your game in this custom window as opposed to setting it in the default inspector. As I said, the main point of this asset is making all of this super easy to do. Building this from scratch using a custom editor would likely take weeks, but with Odin Inspector you might build this in just one or two days. The way it works is all based on attributes, and thankfully over here on the Getting Started window you can open the Attributes Overview, and over here you can see all of the attributes used along with the code and what they look like. So for example, over here on the preview you see Assets Only, you see this nice title, so how do you make that? It's just very simple, it's right down here. You just use the title attribute and that's it, it looks like that. So you can browse around all of these to see all of these attributes. As you can see, you've got custom valley drawers, you got some delayed properties, you got an info box, you've got tons of colors, you can make something searchable, you can make all kinds of buttons, you can display various dictionaries, various lists, various things. You even have some really awesome ifs. So if something, then show a different thing. So this is very useful. Then you got all kinds of groups, so you can really organize it exactly as you want it. Then a bunch of numbers, a bunch of bars, and so on. And again, the whole point of this is that it's all super simple. Most of these, you just add a single attribute and it's done. So for example, over here on the button, you can see how do you make a button? Well, that's it. You just use the attribute button and that's it. You've got a button that it fully works. And as I said, you can inspect these scripts used to make the RPG demo. So you can inspect all of this and see how they all work. So for example, on the items, how do they show an item? They use the preview field, they hide the level and so on. So back in the getting started window, here we see a bunch of examples for editor windows. So you can inherit from Odin editor window instead of the basic Unity editor window. So this enables you to use the same attributes without having to write custom editor code. Then here is a great demo on how to inspect objects. So for example, you can make a button so that you can click on it and it shows up some more detailed information on a specific object. Again, you can inspect the code to see how all of this works. Then you can create your own custom menus. So this is exactly the same thing that you saw on the RPG demo. So you've got all these tabs on the left side and all the data on the right side. Then over here, you've got some more examples on custom drawers. So this is an example scene where you've got all of these objects, all of them with various scripts. So for example, just a basic health bar with a visual display. Then over here, a custom drawer showcasing a custom struct. Then you can also add some options for right clicking. So here, just set a certain color. You can create custom drawers for generic classes, very useful. You can add some validation to make sure that your fields have the correct values. And then over here, it's showcasing how you can even have a fully working Minesweeper game. So here, this is all running the inspector and works exactly right. So you've got the game of Minesweeper. So yep, there you go, as you can see, it fully works. And then you've got a final advanced demo. So these are more advanced use cases. For example, one of the things you can do is build custom editors on top of things where you don't have direct access to the code. Like here, for example, is a custom editor built to showcase the matrix 4x4 type. And finally, of course, down here you've got all kinds of links, so the manual, the documentation, roadmap, issues, support, as well as the Discord channel. All right, so hopefully by now you already have some ideas for how you could use this to make some awesome tools to massively increase your productivity. If you want to learn even more on how to use Odin, you can check out their official YouTube channel. They've got tons of tutorial videos that will help you get the most out of this tool. So now let's see a practical example of how to use it. Now, a while ago, I made my factory automation minigame, and in making that game, one of the data objects that I had to create were some items. So I made them as scriptable object, and here is all of my various items. So here they are without any custom inspectors. So this is the default way that it shows up. Definitely not very usable. So let's spend just a few minutes making this inspector infinitely better. All I have to do is just open up my scriptable object. So here is the script, very simple, just a bunch of fields in the create asset menu, pretty much all basic. So first we need to add the using statement, so using sirenix.odinspector. And once we do, now we have access to the various attributes. So let's begin by making the sprite have a proper preview so we can see it. So over here, just before the sprite field, we're going to add the attribute preview field, and then inside we can add the height. So let's put a height of 16. And yep, there it is, much better. So it's a sprite, and over here I can even click to select it. So I can select and select a different sprite, and there you go, it selects. Now we don't really need the label, so just having the preview is more than enough. And here you can add multiple attributes by simply adding a comma. So in this case, let's hide the label, so just put hide label. And yep, there it is, just a nice preview, no label, everything looks great. 
Okay, so now it would look better if we position the item icon on the left side and all of these fields on the right side. So for that, let's create a horizontal group with the same size as the preview. So use the attribute horizontal group. Let's give it a name, let's call it split, just a split between the left and right side. And for the size, let's put a size of 60. Okay, so that one is now on the left side. Now we want to place the other ones on the right side. And we're going to want those to be grouped vertically. So for that, let's go down into the next field. And in here, we're going to add a vertical group. But we do want these to be inside the horizontal group. So the way we do that is over here in the name, we give it the same name. So we're also on the split. Then use a forward slash, kind of like a folder name. And then let's say just right. And yep, there it is now. The item name shows up on the right side to the right of the actual sprite. Okay, now the label is a bit too big, so there's a lot of wasted space here. So we can also set the size for that one. So for example, put the label width and let's put it say 120. And yep, now that's a much better size. And now for the others, let's just put them on the same vertical group as the item name so they show up beneath it. So in here, let's just copy paste this one onto this one and this one. And yep, there it is. Now here we can also still use just the basic default Unity custom editor code. So for example, over here for the mining timer, let's add a range. Let's put a minimum of zero and a maximum of let's say 10. And yep, there you go. Now the mining timer does have a sliding variable. Then for example, here I added some buttons to set the stack amount to certain values. So I can still use the checkbox in order to set to a fixed value or use these buttons to easily set it. So for these ones, I wanted to put them organized horizontally. So for that, I create another horizontal group to hold the stack amount and then just put the buttons on the same horizontal group so they show up left, right, yep. And then for the buttons, it's very simple. Just use the button, give it some text if you want, and then underneath it, put the actual function that you want to call. So in this case, then the function simply just changes the field. So here are some buttons, a slider, a checkbox, and some really nice icon selector. All right, so with this very simple example, you can already see just how far you can push this. If you're going to work on a project for a decent amount of time, then it definitely makes sense to spend some time just making some good tools so you can greatly increase your productivity. So that's the Odin Inspector, an extremely powerful tool that has the ability to greatly increase your productivity to make better games faster. It's one of the top assets on the Asset Store and for a very good reason. As always, there's a link to the asset in the description and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. Check out the full asset review playlist for some more awesome assets. I hope you found this review useful for your own projects. Let me know in the comments any other assets I should check out. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.